Grand Circle Field School is a nonprofit educational organization. Our mission is to foster stewardship of the environment through active education about the natural and cultural history of the vast public lands of the Colorado Plateau in Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, and Colorado. We partner with the National Park Service and the Bureau of Land Management to teach classes in Grand Canyon Parashant National Monument, Vermilion Cliffs National Monument, and Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. The future of our public lands rests in the hands of our young people. But if they don't experience these unusual landscapes, they won't take care of them. In today's fast-paced world, it's all too easy to confine education to the classroom. This has led to the critical disconnect between children and nature that journalist Richard Louvre, author of Last Child in the Woods, has termed nature deficit disorder. But when nature is the classroom, education becomes experiential, and it facilitates a reconnection with the out of doors. Studies show that children who learn in natural classrooms show increased self-esteem, problem-solving abilities, and motivation to know more. And it's fun. We provide the perfect classroom settings to teach the natural history of the land through its geology, archaeology, botany and biology, and the cultural history of the land through its ancient, early, and current inhabitants. Our instructors include regionally and nationally recognized geologists, historians, biologists, archaeologists, photographers, and natural history authors who are passionate advocates of these lands. They can tailor an educational adventure to meet your specific needs. For the next few minutes, let us take you to some of the extraordinary areas that we serve. Welcome to the Colorado Plateau, the sphere of Grand Circle Field School. Let's begin with Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. Encompassing over 1.2 million acres, Glen Canyon offers unparalleled opportunities for water-based and backcountry study. The recreation area parallels the Colorado River canyons from the western boundary of Canyonlands National Park in southern Utah to Grand Canyon in northern Arizona. Lake Powell stands out as the park's most well-known feature, but a wide panorama of historic and prehistoric sites, geologic landmarks, and areas of biologic interest also play important roles in the Glen Canyon story. Glen Canyon rock units represent geologic periods more recent than those exposed in Grand Canyon. They were laid down during the reign of the dinosaurs. We'll discuss the environments that existed then and the effect that the now eroding rocks have on today's environment. 93 million years ago, the future site of today's Glen Canyon was covered by a vast, shallow sea. Dead marine life fell to the floor of the sea and over eons was covered by thousands of feet of sand and silt. Today, after millions of years of uplift and dissection by the Colorado and its tributaries, the remains are exposed as fossils, including the Plesiosaurus, an enormous ocean predator. At Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument's Big Water Visitor Center, we'll learn more about the Plesiosaurus and other late Mesozoic life. The creation of Lake Powell and the management of the Colorado River downstream from Glen Canyon Dam evoke a myriad of emotional and intellectual responses about the relative value of development on the one hand and preservation on the other. Lake Powell began to fill in 1963 as part of the Colorado River Storage Project, inundating a comely little known canyon. The result is a spectacular lake rich in new vistas and sparkling beauty and a place of great sadness for those who know what was lost beneath its waters. But much remains beyond the reach of the lake, a counterpoint that provides a great classroom for those interested in what many consider to be our country's most wrenching environmental controversy. Students in Lake Powell classes can camp or stay on houseboats and enjoy many activities kayaking, hiking, photography, and the investigation of prehistoric sites. Our explorations include field classes in geology, archaeology, astronomy, wilderness skills, and ethnobotany, where students can go shopping for groceries the way the ancient inhabitants once did. Rainbow Bridge National Monument lies adjacent to Glen Canyon National Recreation Area at the foot of Navajo Mountain in southern Utah. 
It's the world's largest natural bridge with a span of 275 feet. It has been known by Native Americans for many centuries, but wasn't documented by Anglos until 1909, more than 35 years after America's first national park was founded at Yellowstone. The land's shape, elevation, and constitution is the geologic stage upon which everything, including human affairs, plays out. The view from Horseshoe Bend illustrates how the Colorado River, imprisoned in a deep canyon surrounded by a bizarrely complex terrain, literally blocked America's westward pioneer migration in this region, explaining why Glen Canyon remained largely unknown until the 1950s. From our rim vantage point, we'll discuss river evolution, canyon incision, rock units, and Glen Canyon's surprising lack of river rapids. Antelope Slot Canyon is a geologic and photogenic marvel that reveals what infrequent but vigorous flash floods can do in carving landscapes below the general lay of the land. In the dim, twisting labyrinths of Antelope Canyon, we will talk about cross-bedding patterns in the Navajo sandstone, the age of slot canyons, their rapid creation, and what prompts them to form in a land that is otherwise dominated by wide open spaces. On a raft trip on the Colorado River downstream of Glen Canyon Dam, students float the sole surviving segment of Glen Canyon, the section left unflooded by Lake Powell. It's 15 miles of smooth water gliding beneath towering red rock cliffs. As we drift down the canyon from the dam to Lee's Ferry, our instructors discuss rock art sites, wildlife, and a brief but frantic search for gold in the gravels of Glen Canyon. They can also provide a comprehensive background on river ecosystem management issues, especially those related to the operation of Glen Canyon Dam. Nestled beneath towering cliffs, Lee's Ferry is situated where the Colorado emerges from Glen Canyon to dive into Grand Canyon. This lonely location was geologically blessed. It provided the one and only river crossing in the Utah-Arizona borderlands, and it therefore figured prominently in the area's settlement. Today, it's where all Grand Canyon river trips begin. Near the mouth of the Perea River at Lee's Ferry, Lonely Dell Ranch was founded in 1870 by the controversial Mormon figure John D. Lee. His ferry became a pivotal location in Mormon and non-Mormon history, and it continued operation until Navajo Bridge was constructed in 1928. Today, the ranch and its historic buildings are part of Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, and the old bridge has been converted into a spectacular pedestrian walkway almost 500 feet above the river. In the Lees Ferry area, students can hike to the summit of the Glen Canyon Cliffs for an eagle-eye view of the Colorado as it slips into Grand Canyon, or they can scramble down into the narrows of Cathedral Wash, where in a single step they can cross the Permo-Triassic boundary, the time of the largest mass extinction in all Earth history. Or across the river, we can guide you up Lee's Backbone, the improbable, axle-busting route first traveled by the pioneers in the late 1800s. On a walk out to the rim of Marble Canyon, that's the upper portion of Grand Canyon, at Badger Overlook, we'll look for an endangered plant species, the tiny, rare pediocactus that lives only along this canyon edge. And with a little luck, we might see California condors soaring along the nearby cliffs, playing in the swirling winds. In 